No, I was just thinking this morning that it's, mm -hmm. it's so beautiful that we live in this world when we can just easily connect for, like through the, around across the world and just have a conversation, you know, at any time, <laughs> at any day. <laughs> It's so beautiful because uh, we take things like this for granted, but when you think it's, you know, like even like 20 years ago, that wasn't really possible. Yeah, it's it's a borderline miracle on some levels. And it start, especially when you start thinking about with you in Dubai and me in Hawaii, like it's so much mm -hmm. more than just being around the world. It's like almost two different worlds. Like one's like this water world that's full of magnificent mysteries. And so too is you on the other side of the desert and all the beautiful mystique that's over there. It's, it's, it is fascinating to me to think about what can exactly. happen and what is able to happen right there. Let me give you a quick introduction and just for the people who may not know exactly who you are. And for those listening right now, welcome back to the true life podcast. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I hope that the new year is treating you in magnificent ways and that I hope you know that there's a bright light right around the corner getting ready to shine on you. I would like everyone to meet my incredible guest, incredible individual, Jana Bellugina, an avid seeker of truth, a guardian of wisdom, and your dedicated companion on the thrilling odyssey of self-discovery. Hailing from the enchanting landscapes of Estonia, Jana's life unfolds like a rich tapestry woven with travels, diverse cultures, spiritual practices, and delightful culinary escapades. While her professional journey soared in top management roles within software development and financial technology, there was always a deeper current beckoning her towards self-exploration. From a unique gift discovered in her youth to a transformative encounter with yoga in India, Jenna's path has been a symphony of diverse experiences converging into a harmonious whole. The founder of the Being to Being Project, Jenna seamlessly blends her profound wisdom with unwavering passion. Whether delving into spirituality, personal development, or business acumen, she crafts clarity with logical precision. As a mentor, Jenna's approach, a fusion of accumulated wisdom and spiritual insight, connects with individuals from various backgrounds, making transformation accessible and relatable. Jenna, thank you for being here today. How are you? Thank you so much for such a beautiful introduction. And you know, it's like, it's, it's so inspiring to listen how someone, uh, frames your story it's always so inspirational and beautiful thank you so much Jersh. thank you for having me in this podcast it's beautiful uh, it's uh, thank you for thank you for for noticing that like i think that that's a great way in order to frame something like you have an opportunity when you meet someone is to put a nice little frame around some of the things that they've done and really open up an exploration of the things you admire about somebody. And that's what I want this to be. Like you're doing some really cool things from a, a recent post where I saw you helping people to an earlier conversation we were just having. And, you know, I want to get into it all because I want to share it with the audience and I want people to see what is possible out there. So maybe we can start off with a little bit of a background. Like you have done a lot of world traveling and you have had a lot of experiences that have opened you up. Maybe you could share maybe an experience that kind of got you to where you are today, just to kind of break the ice for the people. Oh my God. Just one experience. That would be, <laughs> that would be very, very hard because you know, every single trip, every, every single day, I would say, you know, like yeah. the, the more I leave uh, and the more I leave, you know, with this sense of awareness, uh, I realized that every single day can be that turning point. Um, so yes, it's uh, it's it's very hard to you know narrow it down to one experience. Maybe I can share a bit about my journey yeah. in general. So it kind of gives the, the this the range of what we're what we're dealing with. So uh, yeah, I'm originally from Estonia, and actually I was born in the Soviet Union. <laughs> so that <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> um and so yeah i was born and i started like i was halfway through my through my high school when i when the soviet broke down and uh estonia got its independence and we had all to shift you know and i was just talking with a with a friend yesterday i was just telling her because she's she's 10 young, years younger so she doesn't remember those times but like i was telling her you know how it was how the shift was when they 
when the parents, you know, lose everything overnight, when the currency changes, when the uh, language changes, when, you know, the whole culture changes pretty much. So that was, I think, you know, like if I look ret right. retrospectively, that was, you know, quite significant uh, journey because I was already in that age where, where I was conscious about what's happening. So I think that kind of set, the the tone of my life you know a lot of changes constant changes and just being very very agile mm. so um by like at, at 15 i went to us i did my um high school there the last year i got my diploma there and then i traveled to paris for my uni you know and then it's like it basically all aligned with what i'm doing so you know so far i have lived in eight different countries uh, some less, some more. Um, definitely the the longest is in Dubai. So I am in Dubai already for eight years. Uh, it wasn't really, you know, a planned uh, relocation, but it just happened. Like things for me, they just happen and I learned to embrace it. Because before, you know, I was like frustrated, like, oh, I want it this way. And then I realized like everything that happens is always for the best. So... Yeah, even like this relocation, because I was at that point, I was uh, living in Estonia. I have like came back to Estonia. I was there for a few years already. I was going through this separation with my husband at that point, uh, which was very dramatic uh, and intense um, separation um, when I look back at it. But it was also so transformational, I think, for right. both of us. We, we, we managed to stay great friends and uh yeah i'm very grateful to him for everything he has done for me and we still support each other unconditionally so but that was an intense period of my life and i remember that i was um traveling to dubai for work because i was kind of managing this region as well for the software company i was working for and i i fell in love here yeah. <laughs> so, it's just 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 out of you know it just struck me you know those like the laugh from the first sight mm -hmm. which turns out you know never never a good story <laughs> most of the times it's never <laughs> it's not a good story <laughs> but that was exactly what i needed at that point to actually finalize my divorce you know to to be brave yeah. enough to, to do that for love uh to relocate to another country for love and you know just shortly after i relocated uh, that that love story ended but uh, it served its purpose purely it just served its purpose and I, that's how i ended up here in dubai and i would say that the biggest transformation for me happened here um which is quite interesting because you know a lot of people they tend to see Dubai as, oh, Dubai is this materialistic city and it's like all bling bling, no soul. I, 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 I keep on hearing these things pretty much daily, um, surprisingly, from the people who don't live here. So, yeah, everyone has this <laughs> stereotype and uh, like to voice it out. Um, in my opinion, Dubai is a beautiful, beautiful land. And I always say that Dubai kind of amplifies whatever you have, it will always amplify whatever you have, whatever you look for. So if you are looking for the bling bling and parties all night long, yeah, Dubai can happily provide you for that. Um, if you are looking for, you know, if you're a workaholic and looking for career opportunities and so on, again, you can work 24 seven in Dubai, this city never sleeps. It's very intense and it's like quite brutal brutal mm. career wise here yeah uh, but again if if there is some you know the, if there is a craving for something more spiritual Dubai again provides for that it's such a beautiful land the energy here is so pure um we, we didn't really have you know like lots like lots of wars on this land or there, there wasn't much drama it's very fresh country yeah. Uh, what were just a little over 50 years. So uh, it's fresh, it's it's new, it's the land of opportunities, everything you want is here, and it's a hub. So everyone transitions at some point through Dubai. So all these beautiful teachers, they're, you know, at some point they will end up in Dubai. So 
So if you're open for that, then it serves the opportunity. And um, for me, that was very fruitful in that sense because, yeah, I came here and I was, I was um, really deep in my work. You know, I was an executive. I was like super serious and like traveling mm -hmm. around the world. I was like, I was pretty much living on the plane. You know, I was spending, I would say, like around seventy percent of the time traveling. Wow. On the business trips and you know it was like all going well up till some point when when i lost sleep <laughs> because i was constantly on the plane and i was basically using alcohol as the substitute right. to to uh knock me out uh we can say honestly right now yeah uh, and you know, and I had an acute back inflammation as well. And I was like fed all these crazy drugs um, that just made me delusional. Sure. And, and I realized, you know, I was like, I was in my early 30s. And I was like, I cannot go on like that because I'm just like, I'm literally like an old person. You know, I can't function. I, I drink a lot. I gained weight, you know, all, all, all this. And I was miserable i was so unhappy so i had to change something and um i mean like first it was just purely physical when i went like i just went signed up for the closest yoga studio because i used to practice yoga back in estonia but like not that much uh, but i was like yeah i remember that was helping you know kind of with my back issues it was like so like i i signed up purely for that and how it changed my life is just incredible because, uh, you know, of course I had to re like, I have to change the whole routine because yeah, I was like, I started going to the afternoon classes, but then I realized quickly that if, if I really seriously want to get into yoga, then majority of them in the morning, yeah. but I slept in the morning because I parted at the <laughs> night. So that was, I was like, Oh my God, it's like, it's so difficult. Uh, but like, so I, I started like coming only to Friday class. It was Friday Ashtanga class, which started at 9 a.m. Friday used to be the weekend for us back then. Um, so, and I would come at nine because that was the earliest class I could make. While, you know, the rest of the week, they would start at 6 a.m. for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never in my life. <laughs> and I was always the last person to walk into the room was my cup of coffee, you know, at nine, I could, I could barely open my eyes. I was like, oh my God, like, what am I doing to myself? But slowly, slowly, you know, I transitioned. And it's so funny because now it's been like already many years after we left with my teacher, because now I arrive for a 6 a.m. class before my teacher. And I'm like, ah, ah, ah you're late, like two minutes late. I've been here 15 minutes already, like waiting for the doors to open. And, and, and we're always like, like how far I went. <laughs> you know, and now for me, it's, and I'm like 9 a.m. You know, nine, by 9 a.m., I, I had my half day already done. You know, I've done my yoga. I've done my right. journaling. I've done my meditation. I've done my coffee. All that by 9 a.m. is already accomplished. So, yeah, that's like that's how it started. You know, it started with yoga. And then, it, then, then of course, you know, travels to India because of yoga. And uh, I've done a lot of uh, trainings in India as um, for, for the yoga teaching and for the meditation teaching. And I met beautiful teachers that are still my teachers. I'm still in touch with them. And uh, I learn from them every day. And um, it slowly, slowly kind of unfolded. That of course the, the the life pushed me out of the corporate job at that right. point, which 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 was a big disaster because I like it was unexpected and I was in the different country and it was just when the COVID started, just before the COVID. So you know, imagine we are on the lockdown. Uh, I don't have a job and I am in the a different country. I can't like even fly back home pretty much, and I'm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but of course, by, by, by then, I already had, you know, this really big trust, trust in, in the universe, trust in everything is happening right. for a reason. I already done my coaching training. I didn't go for the certification, but I already done my coaching training. 
I was already at the state where I could help myself and others around me. So even though it's like it seemed like a disaster from from outside for me, I managed it quite well. You know, I really enjoyed that time. That was the time for myself. That's when I started um, recording meditations online. And that made me somehow into this spiritual mentor for many people. Right. Uh, and uh, like still up to this day, I, I still release meditations, not as much, but uh, quite regularly. And uh, still up to this day, I have a lot of people reaching out for, for spiritual mentorship, for mindfulness mentorship, because they've been meditating with mm -hmm. me for like years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the stories that I hear from them, you know, how they changed their life through the meditations, how they got all relationships that didn't serve them or uh, depressions or they changed right. their work, you know, they got out of corporate world. All those stories are so inspiring and beautiful. So, um, yeah, so it's basically led me, like, I, I am... Uh, I stumbled across, you know, like the uh, fintech world, which was a pure manifestation from my end again, because at some point, you know, like it was like during the COVID times and I was thinking, what is it that I want to do? And I was like, oh, like I want, I really want to work uh, in fintech uh, startup. That's like more funky and like more interesting for me. And like, I have all this experience with corporate so I can right. pretty much run any company. And I remember I was like, oh, like I want to work for for UK startup because I like going to uh, London for business <laughs> trips. It's <laughs> just like <laughs> engraved in me. I'm like, yeah, I want like a UK startup um, opening a business here in, in UAE. And I want to drive this whole process. And finally, you know, just accidentally, purely accidentally, I met um, a person, he, like, he asked like for a coffee with me. It was a common acquaintance and uh, he's like, oh, let's have a coffee first time in Dubai. He, he just came on vacation. And we were chatting and like, what do you do? What do you do? Like, you know, how's life in Dubai? And he started telling me about his startup and he's the founder of <laughs> UK FinTech startup. And we were talking, he's like, I feel like I need to open an office here. Would you come and work for me? You know, so it's like, I was like, Oh, you just like ticked off all the boxes <laughs> and it uh, just like <laughs> everything that I manifested like half a year before and I already right. forgotten because I already moved on to, to another thing. And then it comes to me, you know, and I was like, hang on a moment. That's like, that's exactly what I manifested. Exactly. And um, I think that was like, you know, the, the turning point when I started to to watch very closely what is it that I'm manifesting. Right. Because if I was able to manifest such a big thing and in such a detail, um, then I can manifest pretty much everything. <laughs> so that's when I started to be more mindful about that and noticing small things, you know? And um, yeah, it's been a great journey. Um, I'm not with that company anymore. So, but but I managed to build their business here in UAE. I got their license. I was their CEO for a few years, and uh, I moved on to my private consultancy in the same space um, now. But now I'm shifting fully into working with people because uh, I realized that because like being in a startup world, you know, I also. I met so many founders right. and I spoke with so many people who, who just need someone to hold their space and not like guide them in, as like I am as a consultant, I'm capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. But what I see is the, the biggest change happens over coffee. When we just have a coffee with them and the feedback I was getting, they're like, oh, how do you do that? It's like half an hour coffee with you gave me more clarity than you know, half a year working with those advisors. And, and I was like, yeah, well, I am a trained coach. So I know how to ask you questions. So you find your path and you find the answers within you. So it's not external when the advisor gives you them because you know, we all right. deep inside, we all know, right? And it's just a matter of someone holding that space and, and, and guiding you to go deep inside you to find those answers. And it, it, like, I find it always so incredible because yeah, I, I've been for that. I know the answers, but when I 
let the other person find his own answers. It will be yeah. always something I have never thought of. I'll be like, wow, okay. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't come up with that solution, even though I'm an expert. But yeah, that's 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 always the best. So yeah, basically this year was very um, very transformational for me, in a sense of my personal clarity that I decided, right. okay, that's it. This is what I'm doing next. I've been I've been working enough in this space of um, serving businesses and companies and so on. I want to work with people because that's. That's what the world I feel needs right now is um, just, you know, the space and someone who, who can help to unpack what we have inside. So that's how the project mm-hmm. Being to Being was born um, because Being to Being is basically blending the passion of coffee for me right. and um passion for mindfulness and you know self-awareness and it's like it it overlaps with coffee quite a lot as i see it and now and uh also the coaching so just like you know professional pure good clean coaching uh is an excellent tool and even though i was like i i'm really into esoterics and all this you know energy work and so on but Still, at some points, you need just just pure coaching, but like really, really good coaching for someone to help you kind of like put it all together, get the clarity and go. So that's that's the the whole project of Been to Being uh, that blends all this uh, concepts and blends pretty much all the modalities that I have uh, been practicing and exploring for maybe like last 10 years or so. So yeah, it's, that's the, <laughs> the nutshell. <laughs> it's been a long. Thank you for coming to my chat talk. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's first off, it's all relevant. It's a beautiful story, and in our first conversation and some of the convert in the conversation we're having now and and in the time in between, one thing that I've noticed is that if you look at the the beginning of this particular story and you see the wall come crashing down, like that's a pretty powerful metaphor to see a wall come crashing down in the way it changes your life. And then to move into whatever, be it, be it software or FinTech and be it through eight different countries. What I hear is a master of relationships. And I think that that's something that being to being does. And I think that's exactly why you can sit down with somebody for a half an hour over a cup of coffee and get them to say things about themselves that they probably haven't told anyone in their life or 30 years, you know? And like, you, you are, you're magnificent at unblocking the things that people have been corking up for so long. But I think that stems from your understanding of relationships, from your relationship to, to fears that may have been and the way you've overcome them and having the courage to, to leave things that were not working. A lot of people can't do that, but maybe you can unpack that a little bit. Like how, how have all of these things made you un made you great at understanding relationships? Maybe you can just talk about relationships for a while. Cause I think you really have a unique perspective there. Thank you so much. Um, well, I think that, you know, the I cannot praise travels <laughs> yeah. enough. Yep, true. So what I think is, like, I've been blessed with having a job uh, for true. eight years that, like, really took me to very, very many different places. And, you know, being, being exposed to really a range of different right. uh, backgrounds, so I think that what, because, you know, like when I was growing up, I was very shy. I was like, I was a super shy child going and talking to a stranger, even like, you know, in my, in my early twenties, right. talking to a complete stranger or picking up a phone and calling some that I don't know who is on that. And oh my God, that was like, that was freaking me out. <laughs> it was just paralyzing. It was just this paralyzing fear. And imagine I'm ending up, you know, like working for international company and like I have to open doors for that company. I was opening new markets. I was like opening a market like of New Zealand, you know, just going to New Zealand, opening the office there, hiring people. (laughs) 
it was it was of course like much later but you know just like this contrast right and when i'm thinking you know when i'm looking back what was it um first of all for sure uh my father uh, who who showed me how how is that possible my father is very very curious yeah my father is like he i'm, I'm exactly the same you know if you nice. look um because he is he would study everything he wants to study he had uh, uh he was a successful entrepreneur but he also studied in the actor school you know my, my mm. parents met on the stage of the theater <laughs> so it's like that's the range we're talking about right so he would be like one day he's like oh i want to be a film director and he starts making movies another day he's like oh like i want to like open a restaurant mm -hmm. and then he's getting into real estate development you know that's the range of my father we're talking about and that's pretty much what i inherited mm -hmm. and <laughs> that makes sense uh, i can see that <laughs> yeah and i and i was always you know like i was always with my dad when i was small because you know those days we didn't have nannies or you know like <laughs> it was just like you're bored, your both parents are working. So I was always in the car. I even didn't have a baby seat, you know, like, for Christ. Like, I was just like there <laughs> in the car. So he removed the passenger seat and he just made, you know, like a little ground for me, just like crawling around. That's so from my very early uh, age, I was exposed to conversations of adults and you know, a lot of adults, you know, different right. conversations, because if you can imagine the range of my father, you know, like, and his interests, these are all conversations that was always around. So I was like, just observing, I was super shy at that, at that age, but I was just listening. And for me, it was like, these were my fairy tales. That's, yeah. that's what I grow up with. That's so cool. And um, then, you know, like travels, travels, I think like everyone has to travel. Travel, travel, travel really as much as you can because travel really takes us out of our comfort bubble. And travel, especially if it's alone or mm. with someone who is like on the same kind of like right. journey as you are, I love traveling alone. I, I just, I just love it. And majority of my travels I do alone because when we go alone, we're more aware of what's happening. And it's so interesting to see, you know, the other facets of our personality showing up because when we rub our shoulders with another culture um another traditions another way of thinking another way of doing things um we're like oh we start reacting differently and we're seeing those like if we're aware of that we can notice it like oh i can be this and i can be that and i can be that so I am way more than I think when I'm just, you know, staying at home. So I think traveling is very, very important just for this range of understanding. It's yourself, um, seeing what you're capable of, what, 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 what that, you know, other ways of thinking and like yeah. other perspectives, so to say. And of course, exploring other cultures because, like, I've been to almost seventy countries at this uh, at this day, and um, we have, we had this competition with my ex partner, you know, who who does more. And like this year, I won, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, I can't believe it! Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it!" <laughs> <laughs> because he was trying really hard to win but uh and i was always like few countries behind <laughs> and um yeah now i won five yeah. <laughs> one country ahead uh and um so but like uh you know just like traveling to so many different countries and of course they're very different some of the countries you know like going like from estonia to cambodia or mm -hmm. like vietnam it's completely different culture but um, that helped me to be open and, you know, be able to, like, I can communicate with everyone. But I think also, you know, like, that's what Dubai gave me. Um, mm -hmm. Because here we have 200 nationalities, everyone living in the same, in the same city. And throughout the day, I will face probably at least five different nationalities, at least, you know, right. like, if I'm staying at home and I'm just going to the grocery shop, you know, and talking to the security on the way. 
that will be at least you know five different nationals in a day all of them they have their own beliefs their own perspectives their own way of thinking and when you when you speak with them like on a daily basis and especially when you start doing business with them you know you you learn all that and you know like here like even celebrations you know like diwali you know I, I was never aware of what diwali is before i moved to uae even though it's an indian celebration like it's in in indian new year pretty much but like how would i learn about it living in estonia we have probably one indian like we have an indian restaurant that the owner is indian who moved there you know in soviet times and just stayed <laughs> But uh, now probably it's like more, but uh, in general. So the, how would I learn about it? So the, being in this hub, international hub, and uh, having Indian friends and, you know, like celebrating with them, having Muslim friends celebrating with them, you know, and, uh, and, and, and it's just like it's different mindsets and mm. you kind of like learn it. And I think that what gives me, so I'm very confident that I, I can talk with absolutely any person on absolutely any topic because I don't connect head to head. I connect heart to heart. And when you connect heart to heart, that's when the magic happens, you know? Because <laughs> even if it's a different language and we don't understand each other, we can still communicate, you know, heart to heart. It's uh it's beautiful, yeah. So it is beautiful. And I'm glad you brought up languages because I know you speak multiple languages. And another, when I think about the linguistics and some symbols and language and communication, not only do you speak multiple languages and you get to learn a lot about cultures and yourself when you have to think in different languages, you know, and, you know, we know that Latin, lots of languages are, a, have a, a Latin root to it. But so do a lot businesses like its own language and different cultures do business differently. It's like its own language. And when you can begin to understand that root and then be yeah. fluent in business in multiple cultures, that's a whole nother way to connect to people. Right? Maybe you can speak to that because you've done it a lot. You very unique in that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> My, my my ego is just you know having the having the moment today thank you so much it's just like because you know like being being like on the spiritual journey i'm suppressing my ego daily like just like calm down buddy but like now it's like yeah told you <laughs> told you good, good information though right like not many people have the opportunity to do business in multiple places and understand that as a language and i think you're unique to 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 do that and it doesn't have to be, you can, you can share it with us. You know what I mean? So it's more of like a sharing thing. So uh, just, <laughs> yeah, but that's true. You know, different right? languages, different languages is, um, it also gives you this another, you know, kind of like tool right. to operate. Even if you just know two languages, it's like right. as, as long as you know, an extra language right. that already gives you a tremendously different perspective. Agreed. Because if I'm if I'm thinking, you know, it's like I speak Russian, I speak English, I speak Estonian. Uh, I I have you know a bit of understanding of French. It used to be fluent, but it's gone. German, you know, Italian. But like, but once you learn two languages at least, yeah, then you kind of the each next language is easier because you're like, yeah, okay, like each language is a bit different, so you know they might. Right backwards right. take this piece like from for here, Ru this one from russian here. russian and english you know it's like it would be complete you, you can always you can always see like oh like she's probably like a native russian because the way the way we would speak in english right. is different like we put the words in a different right. order right so you know and but like once you learn that you understand that it's like yeah every language is different you can, um, but again, you can express yourself. Um, and then also the, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's the way, the way to life, but you start understanding and you start kind of like, I don't know, maybe be more, more passionate and more, more compassionate and more, empathy, yeah. and more Both empathy yeah. Yeah, to, to others. And you understand this like, yeah, it's like, but it's like it's also wires, you know, how we think when we when we speak one language, we think that way. When we speak another language, we we think another way, kind of like yeah. it might be backwards. 
And when you speak with someone also who is not native in that language, like in Dubai, nobody is native in, in English, let's be honest. So like my English kind of deteriorated a bit here <laughs> because, <laughs> because I have to adjust. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you being very kind of like accommodating and you're understanding like, yeah, like, okay, the, he might be expressing himself verbally in one way, right. but it's like, right. you know, what's behind it. So you always kind of look behind it because we can like, you know, we can meet a lot of people who, who are not that good in the language that they're trying to express themselves. And we, sometimes we just, we're just like arrogant and we're like annoyed and totally. we're like, yeah, like, what, just, just, just get it out there right. and, and so on. But it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a skill to accommodate that. Yeah. And, and, and always like see what's behind it and uh, try to, to connect, you know, on the grander scale. And that will extend to everything, you know, that's like, like, like extending the language to business. Because essentially, you know, it doesn't matter which business you're in. The skills are skills, you know, especially when we're talking about soft skills. And business mm -hmm. is a soft skill. Business is not a hard skill, like, yeah, engineering, I don't know, being a surgeon. Yeah, that's that's a very, you know, narrow skill. But business, yeah. running a business, managing a business, it's a soft skill. And once you master it, you can apply it to any single business out there. I cannot think <laughs> of, you know, area that I wouldn't be able to right. come and master. And... This comes with confidence, you know, like, again, the confidence speaking another language, because just, you know, it's, like, it's um, you're a native speaker in English. I'm not, you know, and for me, like, sometimes I'm thinking, you know, sometimes when I go like really low in that, like, oh, like, you know, I'm a failure, didn't, didn't achieve this, that, that, I'll be like, dude, you speak English. Majority of people from your country don't. <laughs> just like, yeah yeah it's a huge <laughs> win just think that and you know yeah so it's like it, that's pretty much the story no <laughs> yeah, like no, no. it speaks volumes because the same way you know when i used to live in mexico people would talk to me and it seemed so fast that the spanish they would speak was so fast and I had to think in English and then translate it to Spanish. So there's always this pause going on. And you're right. When Once you begin doing that in another language, all of a sudden you have this empathy and this patience for other people who are trying to translate in their head and then explain it back to you. And when you're, and when you're doing that, I'm looking at you or I'm, I was looking at the people in Mexico and they were looking at me not only for the words, they're not only listening, but now they're looking at my eyes, they're looking at my facial expressions, they're looking at the tension in my body. And that is exactly what you can look for in business when you're doing a deal. Like, oh, this guy's saying this, but I see the way his fist is clinched up. This guy, you know what I mean? It's like, you start to exactly. see all this physical body language that only really comes when you study it. And the way you study it is by listening to other people speak, but watching their body intensely because you're desperately trying to figure out what they're trying to communicate. That's the beauty of language on so many levels. And I think you expressed it very well there. It's, and, and that does allow you to go to other countries. That does allow you to experience other cultures in a way that is meaningful. And I guarantee you, that's probably kept you out of a lot of trouble as well. Like you get in some spots sometimes, you're like, I'm out of here. I see what this guy's saying, or I see what this girl's doing, but that's not what they mean. I'm gone. <laughs> Yes, yes, but I, and also like you know, it's like it's it's not even like the the skill of language. It's right. the listening. It's, it's the, the level. Listening. It's the level we're listening because we yep. can be in our head and just like trying to connect through our head, as I said. But like, or we can get out of our head. Right. You know, when you're talking with someone and you're not thinking what you're gonna say next, or like you know, you just you're just there. You just listen to the person, and that's a completely different level of connection. You know, when, when we're train when we're training for coaches, um, we have an exercise there when we just look at each other for five minutes, we just look. And then we give the feedback. What, what did I feel in this five minutes happening with you? And it's just 
incredible. So it's coaching with no words because you can coach with no words. You just feel and you're just being so intuitive and like grasping for things. And also like if I'm coaching someone in like who's different, like native language, and they would be struggling with saying the, you know, like, oh, like this, like what's happening, you know, in, in English. I'm like, yeah, say it in your language. It doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter <laughs> you're right. because I'm just getting the, the energy and I can coach you out of like, and I will, and I will continue using that word in that language. I'll be like, yeah, okay, whatever it is. And like, what is it for you? You know, and we unpack that. So it really doesn't matter for me to, you know, if I understand hundred percent and always find a way. And yet how we can like get out of very crazy situations just by feeling. Right. I have a good story for that, uh, which is like, not that I was getting out of the bad situation, but right. how seemingly for everyone was a crazy situation turned out very good success story. I remember that when the war uh, in Crimea started, like the Russia took the Crimea, that right. was like, just like, just, maybe a month after that, I was going on a business trip to Crimea. And I am arriving there with, um, yeah, like, I'm a European, you know, what we do, we travel with credit cards, right? We have our roaming everywhere. Never even crossed my mind, even though I was like traveling intensely, never even crossed my mind that I'm arriving to Crimea, which is under sanctions. No credit cards are working. They're cash only. I have no cash zero my roaming my european roaming of course is not working there so i'm without a phone i'm without internet you know i just cut off and i'm arriving to the airport and the transfers that was supposed to to pick me up they're not there so they kind of lost me and they can't connect with me because i'm out of data like i'm unreachable and i need to get to the city where the conference is happening and that's like three hours drive and it's in the middle of the night and the airport is closing down. So what, what do you do in that situation? <laughs> so I just went to the taxi drivers and I asked like one guy, I was like, can you drive me? It's like three hours through mountains to that place. And I will find a way to pay you somehow at the later date. <laughs> And, you know, like, so we, we, we spent, and he was like, okay, I'll do that. And he was driving and I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I sat in the car with the guy that I just met, you know, we're driving through the night, through the mountains. It's like, there are no other cars. Like he, he can just like stop the car and kill me out right there, you know, just like take my jewelry and that will right. be way more than I will pay him for this taxi ride, right. you know? And like all of his uh, taxi friends, like they're calling him constantly and, like, and I'm being a witness and they're like, are you an idiot? Why are you taking her? She will never pay you. She will like scam you like you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And you know, like, and I'm going and it's like three hours drive. And I understand like, I need to build a very strong friendship with this guy so he doesn't kill me. Yeah. <laughs> so he will feel like we're friends. So I'm using all oh, like I'm tired and like I just want to sleep. It's in the middle of that. But like I use all my skills <laughs> to communicate, <laughs> to build a connection. And he like he he drove me to that hotel and um everyone in that hotel, they were like, You did what? <laughs> like you, you don't do such things, it's not safe. <laughs> like, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was the I was the legend of that conference. And then I found, like, I asked my friend in, in Russia to wire money to him, you know, and then I managed to wire money to her. So it was like a big process. Right. But he got the money and he called my friend um, and he was like, I knew that she's a good person. Like, I was like, everyone told me that she will never pay, but she did. And it's like, it's so incredible that I trusted her and I helped her. And so the, he felt like a like a better person. And I felt yeah. that it was just it's such a great story because everyone was like, you are crazy. I couldn't even send, you know, the SMS that I'm sitting in this car with this plate and, you know, it's a free, free hour drive through the mountains and I don't have connections. So like, you know, I'm like, I would just disappear. But a uh, beautiful story, again, about connection, yes. just, you know, like 
just connecting heart to heart. I was like, man, like, really? I swear, help me out. So yeah, there are stories like that. It's beautiful. And I think that this ties directly into the ideas about manifesting, like you were talking about earlier. In the beginning of our conversation, you were talking about ways in which you were able to manifest things. I think this is a great breakdown of how that happens. And I, you know, sometimes when sometimes people can watch a video or hear someone talk about manifesting something, but it sounds so foreign. And I think that what mm -hmm. we've done here, and maybe we can continue to go down this road, is there's a language of manifesting things. Yeah. And maybe it's listening with the heart, like what we've kind of explained here, whether it's listening intensely to someone's facial features or whether it's listening to the environment around you. But let's dig a little deeper. Like what are some – maybe we can continue to go down this road so people can really understand like what it really means. What do you got? What else? Give us another one. Oh, I, I manifest daily. Like I, I, I'm that person that like, I manifest like this. You tell know, us just how. Like, tell us the language about it. Like break it down. So, for, us. for me, manifesting is about trust. Yes. It's just about trust. So, like I've been, you know, when the when the movie The Secret came out, oh my god, I was like so excited about it. Like I watched it probably like fifty times. That was like from when it was more than twenty years ago. I think it was. And it was, I was like, oh, I was so fascinated, but nothing was working because like, I was like, come on, you know, like I do this vision boards and, uh, you know, like I try to envision it and like I feel in touch. Right. Like I try to follow all those rules. Well, first of all, what's like, first of all is gratitude, 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 gratitude. Whenever we're grateful for things, then we manifest more of those those things and it's just this state of gratitude which is essential i think for like anything be it manifestation be it just happy life be it health be it success anything just being grateful for what we already have uh is essential and like i nailed it, it i was struggling with it because especially when you're in your, you know when oh. you're low yeah. When it's like everything is falling apart, it's so hard to be grateful. It's hard. It is like it is a job. But I realize that, you know, when I'm low and I drop that manifestation, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, like I just I just need a week off. I'll be grateful when things get better. I'm kind of delaying that things get yeah. better. And if in that moment I will just sit down and say, like, okay, fine, I'll just find five things to be grateful for. I'm alive. You know, I have house, I don't know, I can see, I can write, I have this pen, I have this paper, simple, simple things. I immediately feel better. Mm -hmm. So just like leaving, like I'm now doing um, the 300 days of daily gratitude uh, challenge. And everyone is messaging me because like I'm posting it on social media and people are like, oh my God, like 300 days, like that's a lot. <laughs> I'm like, it, that's the whole point of it. <laughs> that should be your whole life. <laughs> right. So I'm trying, I'm trying to show that like this should be your whole life. And um, I'm very proud, for example, of my mom. She's very negative for us. You know, she's like, she, she, she likes to complain. And we had um, a call just before New Year's Eve. And she was saying that, like, oh, I will write this, you know, like wishes for the New Year's Eve, you know, and there's like this. This traditions that you write it, you burn it, you mix it with champagne, you drink it, like all this like very, very post-Soviet kind of yeah. like thing. And I was like, I have a better idea for you. She's like, yeah, tell me because she she loves like she yeah. she, she drinks you know like, like all this picking off this mm -hmm. dreams. I'm like, why don't you like do a, an experiment instead of doing that thing? It's just one year, you know. How many years you've been doing all your life? How, how many of those wishes happened? <laughs> Not that many. Like, let's try another thing. What if you start, you know, just being grateful and just write down what are you grateful for daily? And tomorrow you do 100 things. And she's like, oh my God, like I cannot. I'm like, yeah, you can. Like, that's a challenge. So try. I'm like, try. You're not losing it. So what are we now? It's like 18th of January, you know. I'm talking with my mom. Like I normally have a call with my mom, you know, once in two weeks because that's a bit draining for me. I'm talking with my mom daily now. She is just living her life, you know. She's she's so happy. She's like, no, 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 no. She's like, she has like all these things. She hasn't complained once. And I'm like, what's happening? And I asked her just like the other day. I'm like, are you still on your gratitude thing? 
She's like, oh yeah, yeah, daily. Like I drive, I drive to work. And I'm saying things what I'm grateful for. So like, yeah, I like it. It's like, but like she, she even didn't register, you know, how it changed her life. Right. And it's like for me, and I'm like, yeah, I will not, I will not tell it to her because then she will start having expectations. But like she's in this and it's like, and I can see that it's like two weeks, it changed her. <laughs> so gratitude, that sets this whole tone for us being in a good state. And then when we're, when we're grateful, when we're, when we're also mindful, when we're aware of what's happening with us, you know, it's like it's all these layers. We get into this flow. Mm. And in that flow, we are unstoppable. We can really honestly manifest absolutely anything. And once we kind of like get a hold of that, and the, what is also important to notice that, you know, the small manifestation. Oh, like this like, tiny thing happened. I'm like, ah. I manifested it. Like I did it. I think, right. yeah, I'm good. So, you know, just reminding, giving, giving the credit back to yourself. Then we start noticing more things because again, you know, like where our attention goes, that's where the, you know, like the whole energy flows. So when we're, when we're being grateful, we get more things to be grateful for. When we start noticing, you know, small things we manifest that we're getting more of those things. But kind of like that's the way it goes. And then, you know, more and more things start happening because we have trust. We already have trust. So we know that like, yeah, I can manifest that. I, I just manifest it. Come on. Like, it's like, of course I can. And, and then also like the trust removes fear, which right. is another, you know, like it's another side of the coin that I see, especially a lot a lot of people they come to me with this question for for mentorship they're like once they start going on the spiritual journey and they see the improvement and the things start happening then they develop the fear that once they stop doing all these practices they stop like meditating they stop you know doing like daily walks by the beach and just being mindful and spending so much time and effort on being in the flow once they stop the flow stops. No, if you have the trust, because that's not the flow. That's not the meditation you're doing daily. That's all. That's that all helps you to get into the flow. Once you're there, that's it. It's you. Even when you're low, and like we all low at some right. points. We are humans, so we go for ups and downs. You know, I go for ups and downs daily. Sure. <laughs> you know, within within one day, <laughs> and it does not anyhow affect my manifestation skills it doesn't because i know that i'm capable of doing that it's like i can speak english you know if i'm in a bad mood i can still speak english if i'm in a good mood i can still speak english it doesn't matter the same was manifesting so we have to have that trust and that that belief that yes i can do it and we start with small things you know start manifesting i don't know just like getting a good cup of coffee or like someone, someone, you know, inviting you for a coffee or something, something simple yeah. and just, you know, but acknowledge it. They're like, Oh no, oh no, it's an, not, it's not an accident. Oh yeah, of course. Like, yeah, my friend invited me for a coffee. She always does it. No, flip it. I manifested yeah. it. And when we start doing that, then we will see that we're like absolutely unstoppable. You know, I was like in a very, very low, um, low mood few weeks back like like it was just like in beginning of december i don't remember what exactly was happening it was like in the, in, the, in the worst mood and i went to the beach and i was sitting in the beach and i was like oh maybe it will help me let me do this meditation oh it doesn't work you know she's I'm like yeah i'm so annoyed and it's just like, just like that right. time you know of, like it just happens with all of us mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah whatever and i was sitting i'm like oh it would be so nice to go to a hammam now but like hammam, like the steam baths, we have the Moroccan hammams. And I like, but the hammam we go to with my friend, we were trying to get a spot for three months. It's always fully booked. And it's like, and I'm like, yeah, like there is no chance. Yeah, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I could manifest it, but I'm like, I'm in such a low state. Like I can't be even bothered. And I'm driving back home from the beach and I'm stopping in the traffic jam. It's like, crazy traffic jam and I'm like yeah you know like this traffic jam so annoying you know I'm just like you know wiring myself making it worse and I'm, <laughs> and I'm stepping right in front of the hammam that we normally go to and I'm like okay universe <laughs> I hear you 
Right. So I just like I just stopped the car. I'm stuck anyways in the traffic. So I'm like, yeah, let me just go and ask them. And I walk in, and and, and, the, and the lady, she's like, she puts her phone down and she looks at me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, like I know it's a it's it's a long stretch, and uh, yeah, I know you're fully booked, but, uh, but like, is there is any chance you can like take me now? And she starts laughing, <laughs> and she's like, I don't know how you do that because. I just put down the phone and that was the client that is supposed to come like in half an hour, but she got sick. It's like, do you want to take her place? Because she's like, yeah, we are booked for like next three months. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, I'm going to go next door and have my coffee <laughs> and you prepare things for me and I'll just come back. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and I messaged my friend. I'm like, dude, you will never believe what happened. I just, I, I'm, I'm having my mom session in half an hour. She's like, how exactly <laughs> you've done it and that's like that's the example i always give when people say like oh like I, i'm afraid you know like i'm like i'm in a bad mood and you know just don't manifest bad things when you're in a bad mood you can still manifest but like you will you will manifest right. bad or good just, just manifest good things don't like you you can say like yeah i'm i'm in a really low place now i am in a bad mood that's okay happens with the best of us it does not mean that, you know, I will get in the accident or I will lose my job or blah, blah. It just means that I'm in a bad mood. So like just separating those facts from, you know, the emotional baggage. I am in a bad mood whatever, for whatever reason. But I know that like, yeah, I want to I wanna get that. I want to get that. And I will get that eventually. It's okay. Don't, don't manifest bad things, you know, because they will also manifest. Right. <laughs> So I think, yeah. yeah, it's all about trust and gratitude and just like, just believing it. I love it. I, I think it speaks to the idea of awareness as well. Like so many times when you're in that low state, like, you know, you mentioned, oh, I'm at the beach and then I'm in the traffic jam. Like you're just manifesting the traffic jam. You're mani but what I, what I really admire about many things about that story, but what I really admire is you have the awareness to see the universe calling to you. Like you're stopped right in front of the place you want to go. Like how, like that is the universe. Like Jana, just yes. get out of this bad moment for a minute. I'm trying to talk to you. You know, it's like a good yeah. friend desperately trying to get your attention. Like, hey, over here, it could be way Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's just being aware of that. And I think Thank it's you. like, it's just, 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 just noticing and just trusting. Because I could have said like, yeah, whatever, you know, like this is just like, I will not get into it anyways. And like, what is it? But I, I think it's like, you know, it's curiosity. That's the key. Just be curious. That's ah, good. okay. Yeah. I stopped in the traffic jam. Why? Let's explore that. Just let's be curious because that's like for me, curiosity. That's what drives me, you know, because like I'm, I'm always curious about things and I start exploring and that's how I meet people. And then they introduce me to other people and so on and so on. And it's just, you know, unfolding so beautifully. You know, I've been like, I got interested in coffee just like last year yeah and i and i got into specialty coffee and i like i went and i did my professional training so i'm exploring coffee and like i'm like i'm i'm meeting those experts and i'm like yeah like you're an expert oh like you know like just like can i can i follow you on instagram and i'm like and and and, and for me coffee world is just like it's so big and it's like it's like you know completely uncharted territory i i love it's like i'm like wow and just the other day, uh, the I met I met the quality expert of the biggest coffee company we have here in UAE, and I they're not specialty coffee, but I started with them long like few years back, and I was like admiring their coffee. I was like, wow, that's like like for me that was the best mm -hmm. at that point, and it's like right. and it really they they really have a good coffee, but like I mean like I was shifting from from Nespresso to a brewed coffee and right. I was like using their more commercial, but they still have really good coffees. It's the best commercial coffee out there, I think. And like, and I met the, their quality expert in one of the uh, coffee tastings. And I just like, we just followed each other on Instagram and he's been following me and he just like, messaged me the other day. He's like, do you want to come for like, for our production? You know, what, what to explore? It's like, you're yeah. kidding me. That's for me. Like, you know, the dream coming true. I would never even imagine that I would be invited 
for that company to come and see their production and you know have a coffee with those people they are for me the gods you know yeah and i'm like yes <laughs> Because it's like I, I I love what you're doing, you know. It's just like you're like you're being so curious about coffee. Because I post a lot about coffee. I try different coffee every day, and I talk a lot about it on social media. And he was like, "Yeah, like you're so curious. Come, like we'll we'll show you everything." I'm like that's like that's also you know the way that that that's pure curiosity that took right. me you know from being nobody in the coffee world into person just like being invited to the really big productions and uh, you know exploring and meeting people so it's curious nothing else <laughs> it's wonderful i and that that brings us to the idea of coffee that's this brings us i think it's a great segue into the idea of you know from being to being like I think we've built a little bit of a foundation where people can understand a little bit of your background they can understand a little bit of of how you see the world, how you navigate in this space, what's special to you and, and some of the tips and tricks that you use in order to navigate your life. Maybe we can shift into what is it like if I come to you or say someone's watching and they, they, they want to understand what this being to being is about. Like maybe you can tell us. So, um, you know, when I got into coffee uh, earlier last year and I started mm -hmm. like, for me, it was a part of very interesting uh, experiment. The the whole start of the story. Uh, I like I normally do once a year. I do this experiment with myself when I explore new things, explore new flavors. So like you know, if I order like normally I eat eggs for breakfast, I'll go and order I know lobster rolls for breakfast, brand. <laughs> And um, so, like, I literally come to the coffee place, like, or like the the cafe, and I just like choose from the menu something I have never ordered, and something I would never order for breakfast, or I order like eggs for dinner. You know, just like, I'm completely swapping around. Um, instead of yoga, I signed up last time. I signed up for jujitsu. I was doing Brazilian jujitsu. Nice. <laughs> so you know, like, completely as a side mm -hmm. of the spectrum. Instead of working out in the morning, I start working out in the evening. You know, and like just mixing things up just to disturb my routine and right. see whether it's still serving me, first of all. So like I figured that like, yeah, I do feel better when I work out in the mornings. Right. Point taken, you know, or like, it, yeah, I, I do like my eggs instead of, you know, pastry for the morning. It's just like whatever. But then I would be like, oh, I actually, you know, peanut butter cookie is better than chocolate cookies. I lived 40 years of my life. I was sure I love chocolate cookies. Uh, peanut butter, actually, right. I like it better. Okay, cool. Note. Right. So I do that um, <laughs> yearly. And I also say yes to everything. You know, someone tells me like, oh, let's do that. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And it's like, sometimes it's a bit crazy experiences. But like never, never, you know, like too dangerous. But some of them, you know, will leave me <laughs> weak on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> like when I went for the roller coaster, you know, the, the, the last year, and like, and I, I am scared of roller coasters from 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 my childhood. And I went to the biggest one we have in UAE. I thought I will die, and, mm. and 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 like I was, I was literally demanding them to stop it, like in halfway through. Like obviously nobody listened to me, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. When I told my mom, she was like, "You did what? Like, she said, why, why, why would you do that? Like, you were scared shitless." I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I thought like my heart will stop, but yeah, I'm doing all that. So I took it. and last year when I was doing it, you know, I was like sitting in my in 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 one of the coffee places. I had my breakfast, something very different, and I was ordering coffee. And coffee, I ordered just that, and I'm like, yeah, like oatmeal cappuccino. And then mm. I'm like, hang on a minute. That's when I, that's when it hit me. I'm like, I'm doing all these practices. I'm exploring all these new things. But I always, always order the same coffee. Just like, am I being like mindful at that point? No. Am I being present at that point? No. It's purely automatic, just right. oatmeal cappuccino. So I was like, wait. And then the waiter is like, okay. I'm like, show me what other coffees you have there. <laughs> let's see. And I'm like, ah. And I'm like, I'm like, let's do a cortado. Let me try a cortado with almond milk, you know, just like, Let's go, you know, bananas. Let's let's explore something new. 
and that's like and that's when I could like you know and I tried it and I'm like oh, I actually like it more it's like more coffee taste less milk like I like mm. it so I started exploring and then I was like oh like all this concept you know like speciality coffee what is speciality coffee about so I went like I started going to speciality coffee places and I was talking with baristas and uh and I was like oh tell me you know and it's like they and they're happy to share of course and like sure. you know they they would be like just like showing me you see these beans this is like this processing this is this this is this roasting I'm like yeah I have like no clue I see no difference but like sure I trust you <laughs> and I started tasting you know different coffees and I started exploring and I was traveling the whole summer and like during my summers uh, summer travels I was like yeah I'll be going to all speciality coffee places in those cities that I travel to and try, you know, and I was trying, 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 and I was like reading a lot about it. And then, then I came back to Dubai in the fall. I went for the, for the training and, and, and then when I, like, I started connecting and, you know, so first of all, the level of awareness, you know, it's like, why am I ordering this specific coffee? You know, so it's like, we all have, you know, our preferences. And what I see, like when I, when I started, you know, being mindful about it and noticing what's happening around me. And I always ask my clients as well, you know, who come for coach, you know, how was your cup of coffee this morning? <laughs> ah, why, why did you choose that coffee? Oh, I don't know, because I always drink it. You know, that, that will be the standard answer, right? 99% right. of the cases. I always drink my Americano. What do you mean? But why? What do you like about it? How do you feel before the coffee <laughs> and what do you what do you think when you're choosing to make that cup of coffee oh i don't know you know yesterday yesterday i was meeting with my um uh, uh she she's uh, she's coming as a client for me and mm -hmm. to coaching and uh we had a coffee with her and first time she's like I really want to try that coffee, you know, that you're always like drinking on your Instagram, that pour over. It's like, I never, like, I just drink my Americana. I'm like, okay, let's, let's order. So I ordered the coffee. I spoke with the barista, we chose it. And like, and I explained her how to drink it, you know, like, that like taste, you know, see what, what the flavors, what's, what's on your palate. What do you feel? You know, we, we had like 15 minutes discussion about, she's like, I never knew that the coffee can be so tasty. You know, it's the I, didn't, I, I never even had an idea. I never thought that, like, you know, no. She's like, I don't know. There's, like, some flowers on jasmine. She's like, yeah, jasmine. You know, the, and, like, you pick up on that. And then you get curious. I'm like, oh, so, like, this was the coffee, you know, from Bali, washed beans. Like, oh, what if we try, you know, some other coffee and, like, it will be, like, different taste. So you start exploring those, those, those flavors. And it tells so much about you when you're mindful, because yeah. I never, I never choose my coffee anymore, you know, on autopilot. I wake <laughs> up and I would be like, I go to my kitchen. I have about 30 different coffees. <laughs> I, I, I'm truly living a life of minimalist, but not in coffee. You know, that's one mm -hmm. thing that I'm like, I'm really spoiling myself with. And I have different coffees from all over the world, different processing methods, whatever. And I will always pause there and I'll be like, okay, how do I feel today? Like, for example, I might be like, I might be going for intense uh, training right now and it's a lot of things happening. So I'm a bit like overwhelmed. I can feel that I'm already, you know, in the morning, I'm a bit overwhelmed and I need something to kind of like give me that space to, to contain those emotions and just calm down and focus. <laughs> I'll be like, okay, like, what do I need? Like, I don't, I don't need really like, you know, go for Yemeni coffee, for example. Yemeni is just like, you know, it's madness for your, for your sensory. It's like, it's an overload. That's a celebratory coffee. I'll never do that to myself when I'm already overwhelmed. <laughs> I go for something simple, you know, I go like Kenya, Brazil, washed. So it's stripped down from, you know, that, that richness of flavor. It's more crisp, more clean flavor. Uh, I'll choose the pour over with the Chemex meta because it's just like, it, it's again, kind of like cleans down the right. taste. And then when, so it's like, it's like, it's a process. It's like good 15, 20 minutes for me to, to make my coffee. But then I sit down and then I have this 15 minutes of me time when I'm drinking that coffee. And I know that this is, this is a mindful 
choice of this yeah. coffee, specific coffee, specific flavors, specific beans, specific brewing method. And I already gave myself those like 50, 20 minutes of my time checking in with myself. And then I can sit already and kind of, I know that this specific drink serves me at this specific day, at this specific mindset. And I know that it will just, you know, be good for me, not wire me unnecessary or, or create some, some, some other, you know, weird, um, things for me. So I'm very mindful about my coffee and <sighs> this also trains, you know, the, the muscle of making a choice because yeah. I see like, I sometimes have uh, clients that come and say like, Oh, like I have like difficulty making choice. And I've been to that in that space as well. So like, sure. like at some point of my life, I, I, it was very difficult for me to make choice. So I was constantly trying to shift responsibility to others, you know, like, oh, you choose coffee <laughs> or like you like you choose the wine, you know, right. like how we just like those yeah. small things. So I'm very aware of that. And when 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 someone tells me that, oh, first thing I ask, like, how do you drink your coffee? Like, or like if it's, it's so tea, brilliant. like how, it's brilliant. How do you drink your tea? Like, you know, it's like it's, it can be anything. How do you drink your beer? Like, it doesn't matter. But like, mm -hmm. I work for coffee most of the time. And, I, and, I, and then I'm, I'm, I'm always like can predict that it will be like, yeah, like, I don't, I don't care. It's a coffee, you know, like whatever. Same, same thing every day. And I, I always ask them to start before you order your coffee, before you make your coffee, start thinking, what is it that you want? Like, why are you choosing this coffee? Because that's like, you know, like just answering why. Right. Why, why this specific coffee? Why do I drink this coffee every day? Why am I, am I afraid to change something in my life? And that will be the question I will be asking you. Like, where else in your life are you afraid to make that decision? Where else in your life are you afraid to make changes? Start with coffee. Start trying different coffee every day. Start going to different coffee places every day. And be curious. Even if it's like the worst coffee of your life, I remember I, like, I went to one place and I had a coffee and I was like, wow, that's the worst coffee in my whole life. But like, <laughs> I was so excited about it because I was like, wow, you know, it's like, I would have never, you know, experienced that if I wouldn't be curious, but now I know what is the bad coffee. And that's like, that's a skill to make that bad coffee. Right. It's just like, it's, just like, it's a lot of reflections that you can do around coffee and Train that muscle of making a choice. Train that muscle of getting out of the comfort zone on the very simple things. Because with people, very often, you know, this mindfulness game, um, it's like starts with like, oh, like yep. you go big, you know, you change. Yeah. You have to, like, when I'm listening to like a lot of these big teachers, you know, if you don't kind of like just break it down, it looks like overnight I have to change my whole life. Right. Oh, like, you know, from next day, I will be vegan. I will be meditating daily. I will be like, you know, positive and in <laughs> gratitude and just like all that. And it feels so overwhelming. Just like take it down. Coffee. Start with your coffee. How you choose your coffee. Start choosing other coffees. Start exploring that world and see where it takes you. Because for me, it took me, it took me to, you know, the whole world of specialty coffee, traveling around the world, trying coffees. And it's not my profession, but like, I, I love it. I can make cappuccino now. You yeah. know, I did the barista courses because it is a very challenging skill. And I do appreciate now when like the baristas draw this little art, I'll be like, oh my God, like I know how much, how much work is that? <laughs> oh man, that's like that, that little swan. Right? That's like really a skill. So it's like, you know, it's just like, I, I met new people. And like, I, and those people shared their life stories. I love, love life stories. You know, mm -hmm. like I love listening to like Me how too. people arrive. There is never a, a random person in, uh, in coffee space because nobody is born with the idea, you know, like, oh, I'm going to be the expert in coffee. No, every <laughs> single expert in coffee, they have a story. Wow. Just ask every barista. Next time you go to a coffee shop, ask your barista their life story. It's always so interesting. So yeah, that's like, that, that's the tool. Coffee is just a tool. And just being curious about that small thing 
because it's a daily, it's your daily routine. Tapping into it, oh my God, there is so much you can explore about yourself. So much, yeah. So yeah. that's that. That's the story of coffee, <laughs> and that's why it's bean to bean because it is bean to bean. We start with like a little seed. We start being curious about that seed, and that seed is starting to grow, and it's like growing into something that we're kind of dreaming of becoming. So that's my that's my vision. It's so brilliant, Jana. Like in this, just in this short time, like for anybody who's paying attention, like the idea that you can fundamentally transform someone's life and help them shift decisions, not only through their day, but through their life by starting off with a coffee. Like it's brilliant. Getting someone to understand how to make decisions, getting someone to understand why they make decisions, getting someone to be comfortable with making decisions. And the way you do it, I have never heard of anybody in my life doing it this way. You you make it sound so poetic and beautiful and simple and and approachable like that is one of the many skills that makes you as beautiful as you are that's that that is mind-blowing to me like i see it and i i'm thankful there's people out there like you doing it it's wonderful and 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 all along you're learning this skill that you love to do like you found a way to like take this wonderful curiosity and help every it's like infectious in some ways it's, it's wonderful thank you <laughs> thank you thank you yes it's like for me i i i wanted because you know like i wanted to bring this mindfulness because mindfulness feels yeah, so heavy you know spiritual growth feels so heavy and it's been it's been commercialized unnecessary to become yeah. very difficult it seems difficult yep and it's not <laughs> it's not i've i've been on this journey uh, and I am quite spiritual. I am like, I, I, I am be. in this space. You have to be. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. And like, it, it frustrates me when it's being commercialized and being like, it's made to be more difficult than it is for, for it to be sure. able to commercialize it, sure. right? So um, that's why like, you know, like if it would be so easy, nobody would need all the gurus and teachers, right? <laughs> And that's what I want to achieve. That's like, that's why I'm, I'm like, I started writing a book, you know, where I'm kind of trying to put all this together yeah. because like, you don't need to read, you know, another like million of books. You don't need to go to, you know, a new retreat every month. You don't need all the stitches. No, all the answers we have is within us. What we have to do yeah. is just pause yep. and think and listen to us. Coffee is a great example. That's a pause. So that's why I'm bringing it together. And I really like I am really on the mission to make this, you know, spiritual growth, whatever you call it, accessible and easy for everyone, for everyone. So, so it's like we stop, we stop this madness of, you know, making it difficult and right. all this mindfulness retreats and like uh, meditation retreats and like all that. No, it's all easy. Let's 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 just strip it all down, make it easy. Everyone has access to it. Everyone drinks coffee in the morning. Everyone has access to the spiritual growth. That's it. <laughs> just, that's the bottom line. It's so wonderful. It's it's just pulling the curtain back. Now, look at it's just this little guy over here. That's all it is. Come on over here. Let me show you. <laughs> it's <so> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's. How are you doing on time? You guys, do you have something else coming up in a little bit, or how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, then let me ask you this question. You had spoke to me and told me this incredible story about your father and, and driving in the car and this idea of curiosity. But you also let slip that your mother had this affinity to the esoteric where she's doing this thing with the champagne. And I can't help get that out of my mind that on some level, maybe your esoteric roots were sort of tied to some of the things your mom did. Maybe you could share a story that I would love to hear it. Oh, like my, my mom and esoteric. No, no, that's like, that's a very <laughs> pagan ritual, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but a ritual my mom would, nonetheless. <clears throat> my mom would be more religious, you know? She's, okay. she's really, she's really the church person. She goes to church and, uh, 
but it's like it's it's very funny you know the way she's like she's she's nitpicking you know this i believe this no and she's kind of like you know she's, she's finding her journey um you know what's 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 incredible about my mother for sure is that she believes in miracles and that's like that's what i think i inherited from her uh so my father is super curious uh and um that's like that side of the spectrum my mom she is she's not that curious but she really believes in miracles she believes in miracles like it's a bit another extreme because she completely gives her power away to something mm. external kind of like shifting responsibility for everything right. that is happening to her to the god to the you know to the right. chance to the government you know all those things so like but she truly believes in miracles she she's in her 60s right she's still like a young child you see her she's like she's she, she's she's tiny and like very active and she's like all over she's like oh <laughs> <laughs> she has so much energy and for me it's like sometimes hard because i visit her once a year right and it's like it takes me a few days to adjust because she has so much energy. She's like, she has more energy than I do. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, she, she always like, she always believes, you know, like, oh, like, you know, like you would like, you, you do it like this. And, and then, you know, like the, something happens, you know, they're like the gods of this will come. <laughs> and she's like constantly, she's like, oh, I will go to the church and I will, I will like, you know, write down that note and then they pray for you. And then it ends so, like, she attributes all my successes to that. Because when I tell her like, oh, like this happened, she's like, yeah, yeah, I wrote a note in the church. That's why. And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's why. <laughs> but uh, but she's like, she's learning now uh, to, it, it, it is quite impressive, you know, that in her age, she's like, she's, She's listening because she's watching my journey and she, nice. she kind of like already grasps it. it's like mm, you're doing something different and it works better than like all these <laughs> rituals that i do so kind of like she starts asking and she listens um that like you know because that's like the major thing that i want for her is to take the power back because mm -hmm. that's like that's the concept of responsibility we always think that like oh responsibility is like so difficult it's like it's like heavy work responsibility is just our ability to respond nothing else mm. it's just our ability to respond and when we're taking responsibility back that's when the true magic happens and we 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 can create whatever we want and just like you know pairing curiosity and you know this faith into miracles and taking the responsibility back that's pretty much me so <sighs> my father my mother and that's here, like, here is the result, you know, right. I'm the sum of these two right. things. <laughs> because, yeah, I've been like, I've been in both, you know, I've been like, first, like super curious, but sure. not taking any responsibility, not believing in anything, blah, blah, just like all over. Then I've been, you know, shifting also, you know, like all this esoteric thing that was the big, big part of my life. Like, yeah, like, you know, something will happen. And then when I kind of like blended it all, when I have a faith to universe, so when I'm curious and I'm taking my full power back to myself and, and taking full responsibility for whatever is happening, that's, you know, like that's when it's all starts to shift. When you look back on all these things that have happened, like I, I'm coming up on almost 50 years old. And when I look back at all these things that happened in my life, I can't help but see them as necessary like all of these things that happened are like a recipe like they these were the things that i had to go through in order to get to the realizations that i have today and that helps me you know look being able to have some lived experience and look back on some of these events helps me with the momentum to move forward because now i do have this faith i do have this trust and you know i trust that i don't know and it's none of my business to know because i can't know you know and it kind of helps me re release some of the the trapping yourself in the future but how do you what what is what is the lens through which you look back that helps you propel yourself into the future oh like i when i look back i can see that every single thing was for a reason yeah every single thing 
even like what we think like were at that at that time it, that was the end that was the end i was like i was thinking just like i had few moments in my life when i would just lay for weeks and weeks in my bed and just wait to die you know that, that's it like i will i will not survive for this i just want to die but <laughs> And when I'm looking back, it's like everything was for a reason. Yeah. It's incredible, incredible how, you know, all this puzzle kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, you know, I was saying um, that like last year was kind of like the closing of the 20 year loop for me. Okay. When I started like 20 years, like, was 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 my journey um and i kind of like went through all this loop when i drifted very very far away from myself you know like shredding layers layers mm -hmm. of experience knowledge you know wisdom all that like like you know covering myself up yeah and then and then kind of like so i did like that half a turn and then like another half a turn was like shredding those layers okay Just, like getting back to the core right and i kind of like it felt exactly like and it's like it's funny because it's it all started in paris when i was studying in paris and this summer i traveled back to paris after 20 <laughs> years like <laughs> haven't been there like 20 years and like and, and i came back and i visited you know the apartment that i lived you know the the university street like all that so i went for that journey uh, and it felt like you know like okay i i went on this journey drifting away from myself and then coming back to myself with all that wisdom that I have gathered on the way. And that's kind of like, boom, I am complete. That's the feeling <laughs> I got, uh, you know, the um, last year that was like, I am complete. I am in the right place. Uh, all that experience. I remember when I started, you know, the coffee even like I had my friend, she was like, oh, but why are you doing that? Like, you can't really monetize it. Like, what are you going to do with it? It's like, it's like, it's so intense because it's intense and the expensive uh, studies. Now, like, I, knowing my life path, it, it will fit somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I have this idea of like being to being like, boom, <laughs> you know, it comes <laughs> together. So it's like nothing, like, it's like, it's like, nothing goes unnoticed everything is for a reason every single interest every single book that we read every yep. single person we meet everything yeah. will find its place so with that knowledge you know it's so much easier to leave to be yeah. honest because now when something happens i don't stress i'm like yeah i can be i can be upset of course i'm a human sure. i have my emotions but I'm not stressed, you know, like I'm not, I'm not going to be laying and dying or like, you know, just I'll be like, yeah, okay. That's unfortunate. Right. That's not how I want it. But like, I'm curious to know, mm -hmm. you know, how it will turn out. Right. Because it's like, that's always, if something goes not like I plan uh, and what we perceive negative, you know, in, right. in, in, in our human society, I will be always curious. I'll be like, I wonder because that on, that can only mean that something is better planned for me. There is only one way. It 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 can't be is that like oh the universe now wants to you know right. give me some negative experience. No, that like it doesn't work. Like I know I've I lived more than forty years. I know that experience <laughs> like universe doesn't work that way, right? So right. I already have that that knowledge. So I'm like ah interesting. Something is better coming up. What can be coming up? Because it, there is no yeah. way I can imagine. It's like, you know, when I was um, one, one of one of my works, uh, I remember like I was so I was so frustrated and I was like, so like a few years back, I was working for for a digital bank and I was like so frustrated and like, and I felt that it's like it's not serving me and I don't serve them anymore and I want to get out and I want to I just want to paint, you know, like and right. like, be artist for like a year. And travel and just like whatever, and I was like so frustrated. And I remember I was saying, I was like, oh, okay, like how can like how can I like how can I do it? And then I thought like, okay, I'll just work for another like six months. I just need six months of the salary, so like I, I'll just create that buffer. And then I promise, once I get that buffer, I'll leave that job and I will start painting. And one week after one week, 
I'm being called uh, to a CEO and he's like, um, we decided to let you go because like it's, it's been toxic. It's like definitely right. been toxic for like both of us. We have, we had a lot of tension. He's like, we decided to let you go, but we're giving you six months parachute. He's like, we're sending you on the gardening leave for six months. It's not in my agreement. And this is not a practice in UAE. It's just not practiced in UAE. Nobody, like when I told to my friends, I'm like, there is no gardening leave in UAE. I'm like, yeah, but like I, I manifested it. You know? so, like, <laughs> so, it's like, so it's like, I would never even imagine that things like this possible because it's not in my contract. That's not the common practice for businesses here. How, how, like, you know, but I knew for sure that I want this six months and the universe is like, yeah, okay. You wanted to work for six months. Let me get you fired yeah. like in a week's right. time, but you get all those six months of salary. I was like, that was an option. Like, I, like, wow, <laughs> that's right. better than I wanted. Like that's way better. So in those yeah. six months, I traveled the world. I'd like, I traveled to like, I think six countries I've been to. I did my personal exhibition. So I like I started painting, I, I kept my promise. So I painted, I did my personal exhibition. Uh, I sold quite a few paintings, you know, I like I, I made a name as a as an artist. So like I'm still being invited to all the exhibitions and people still like, oh, like when when is your next exhibition? So, like, I did all that. And the, then I was fresh and, you know, ready to tackle another challenge. But it's like, I would never come up with things like that. It's impossible. <laughs> But when I was telling people that like, it's impossible, that's, that's, that, that's not possible. Yeah, it is possible. So, you know, like, and like, and I could have been like super upset that like I lost my job, you know, before I planned it and whatever. I was like super grateful. Like, yeah, let's embrace it. See what's happening. And that's how I, that's how I look at my life. It's always for the best. Always. It's beautiful. I, I've learned and I hope that people listening to this can can take some wisdom from from that story. And it seems to me that when something doesn't work out for you, for anybody listening to this, it's because you're thinking too small. Like yes. it's not it's too small. It didn't you know why yeah. it failed? Because it's not good enough for you. It's not big enough for you. Dream bigger. Exactly. Every time you every time you run into a wall, you should hear the sound dream bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That that is so accurate. Because we just like, we're so, you know, in our boxes yeah. and, and, yeah. and we try to, we try to leave our future from our head, but our head only knows solutions that it had already experienced. Right. Our head, our brain is not capable of coming up with something new, something out of the box. To do that, we yeah. have to tap into our heart. We, we just have to connect with, with our true being because our soul has lived, you know, thousands and thousands of life. Our soul has a real experience. Our body and the brain in this body is so limited. It's limited only to this lifetime. And it's like, no, we can't figure it out. So sometimes it's like, it's, it's much better to be in that state that would allow you to, to figure it out. And like through your heart, through your real experience, then, you know, just confining yourself to this little box called head because that's not serving us at all. It's really not. It's really not. Jenna, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this conversation. I mean, I can try to, but I don't think I could express it. <laughs> this is really, really fun. And I, did, I wasn't sure that we were going to be able to have more fun in this conversation than our last conversation, but you know, there's the old adage of more cups of tea, or maybe we should use more cups of coffee for this particular one. But it seems that the more cups of coffee we have, the better the conversation. I'm truly grateful for this conversation. I'm looking forward to more cups of coffee. And But before I let you go, where can people find you? What do you have coming up? And what are you excited about? Okay, thank you. Well, um, I am. people can find me on Instagram. That's the easiest way to connect with me. It's uh, jana.beantobeing. Super easy to find me. I'm there. I actually answer all my messages. So uh, always happy to to speak with people and like learn their stories. I have a website, beingtobeing.com. So you can find me there. You can also send me an email there. Easy. Um, this year, the book will be coming up. So the book uh, called Seep, Brief, Thrive. 
which is about coffee mindfulness awareness and coaching so i am uh this year i'm opening um i'm taking clients in finally <laughs> a lot of people have been waiting for that <laughs> i'm taking clients in uh for coaching for mentorship so i'm shifting full time in it and i'm just creating a lot of space for everyone who wants to you know get this part of energy from me i'm ready to share with everyone so yes that's probably the easiest ways to find them of course i'm on linkedin on facebook but like these are not the means that i use daily so yeah instagram or just you know email me <laughs> ladies and gentlemen if you're watching this go down to the show notes check out the website reach out to Jana. she's a incredible individual who has a very unique way of helping people listen to their own heart or helping people listen to the world that's trying to talk to them. And it's, it's wonderful. And I've, I've experienced it here. And I think anybody listening to this will too. So if you're listening, hang on briefly afterwards. I'd like to speak to you just briefly afterwards. But to everybody that's listening or watching this, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you have a wonderful day. And that's all we got. Aloha. Thank you so much. Aloha. <laughs>